Hey there, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Uh, a common problem with students getting into, you know, blues playing and soloing and all that kind of stuff is bending. And I see this all the time, just, you know, how to bend a note and really get it to, to sound like it's supposed to sound. Okay, so there's a couple of things that are common culprits or really one main thing, two main things, okay? The first is when you bend a note, you can't, you can't just randomly bend a note. It, it, it tends to make you a little seasick, right? You, you have to realize that bending a note is a way to articulate another note. Okay, so for example, let's say that we're gonna bend this note. And what I'm thinking is I'm thinking about what's commonly known as box one, right? In the key of A. Be it pentatonic or blues, it really doesn't matter. So I'm thinking about this note here at the eighth fret of the second string. If I wanna bend that note, that's great and all, but it has to go somewhere. And where it's gonna go is to the next note in the scale which would be the fifth fret on the first string. So I need to make this note sound like this note. That's not gonna cut it, <laughs> right? If I play them together, you can hear they're the same. If I release that bend a little bit, not so good, right? So that's not what we want. You want them to be identical, okay? So, for example, I see a lot of people that'll bend this note. They'll come down and bend that note. Okay, well, if you look at the scale, the next note of the scale is from, instead of that seventh fret on the fourth string, it's the fifth fret on the third string. If I try to actually hit that, I bend so far, I almost go off the edge of the fretboard. <laughs> and in the process, I'm actually pulling so hard as to make my bridge go flat. It, so in other words, it's not a very reasonable bend to do. It doesn't really make any sense. It's really far away, okay? So in general, you're not gonna bend anything down here. I'm not saying that you can't ever, right? I could bend that one to that one because it's only one step. I could probably make it work. I could probably make that one get to that one, right? Because it's only one step. On the lower three strings, of course, I pull because I want to go towards the center of the fretboard. But like that, to get it to sound like that, that's three frets. It's hard to do. It could be done. I'm not saying it's impossible. But my guitar is super out of tune now. <laughs> from, from mangling all those bends. <laughs> the easiest places to bend are these top three notes, okay? So, in other words, the eighth fret on the first string has to sound like the tenth. The eighth fret on the second string would sound like the fifth on the first or the tenth on the second. It's a single step. Seventh fret on the third string would sound like the ninth fret or the fifth fret on the second string. My guitar is now out of tune, so be careful doing all those bends, especially if you try to do those bends that are a little unreasonable. <laughs> It'll pull your guitar out of tune sometimes. But anyhow, I hope you get the idea. Um, you, it's A bend is not a random thing. You, you have to have a place that you're going with that bend. So I hope this helps bending make a little bit more sense, shows you a little bit about where you can bend in that traditional, you know, box one pattern. Um, and hopefully you get something out of this. And if you did, if you enjoy it, and you know somebody else who might dig it, I hope you'll share it with them. Let them get something out of it as well. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care.